it was really hard. I knew watching other, you know, videos on the platform that I was not gonna do the comedy route. I couldn't pull off the punchlines of the skits. I wasn't funny enough for that. And, and that wasn't like how my brain works with the writing. You might know Zach King as the mastermind behind some of your favorite viral videos, featuring celebrities like Selena Gomez, Terry Crews, and Justin Bieber. But this almost stopped him from making videos. I did the VFX for so many years on my work and I felt like oh, I was the only one that knew how to do it, which was totally a lie. Zach and I get into all that and more on this episode of Loaded Questions. I'll only have until he finishes shooting this roll of film to ask him anything I've ever wanted to know about him. No second chances. Let's go. Well, there's so many cool things to photograph here. I think I want to get a photo of you next to the mummy. Noah's the art director. He built this by hand. Zach King is famous for his highly complex style of filmmaking across YouTube, Vine, and now TikTok. But how often do his ambitious ideas turn into ambitious duds that never work out? We have a fail rate now. It's, it's about one a month that fails, or one every five weeks. I view that as a good thing. It means that we're actually like trying to make stuff, and I'm happy if we do a misfire and it doesn't work out. It's not like crazy expensive usually at the end of the day, um, and it means we're making a lot of other good ones that wouldn't get made if we were like scared to try. Uh, that's two pictures in the in the reel there. There's something fun about like the there's like a pressure, there's like stakes with film. That's so cool. I mean, we have to take a photo here with this bridge. Zach King has been making videos almost as long as social media has existed. So how does he balance the stress of having to make money off of every idea with continuing to evolve as a filmmaker? I had to give a talk at my alma mater, Biola University, like a couple years ago. And they were like, give us 10 hacks for filmmakers. See if I can. And one of my hacks was use other people's money to to fund your learning. I even remember I had that pride in like senior year leaving film school and I was like, oh, I, you know, some production company would be so lucky, some studio would be so lucky to hire me and have me direct their 50 or $100 million movie. And looking back now, like how foolish that thought is because um, I wouldn't have known at all anything how to budget a movie or break that down or what I was doing. Even now it's like, I need to start on the $5 million movie first. This is really cool. This approach to filmmaking keeps Zach constantly exploring new ideas. But where did this mentality come from? And how did he realize that this was the way that he wanted to do it? Yeah, no, I was, I was a hooligan growing up. A lot of filmmakers were. Film was the excuse that I had to actually be a hooligan and film it. It was like, oh yeah, no, this dirt explosion, mom, I'm making a movie. Or like, mom, I, why did I take the gasoline for the lawnmowers? It's because I'm making a movie, and, and like that excuse is why I got away with so much stuff growing up, because I just had the camera in my hand. It was like a license to do something crazy. So with all these ingredients in place for how Zach approaches his work, it begs the question, does he regret any of the videos that he's created along the way? They kind of look like crosshairs. Monica King, that's one of my only regrets, I think, in my career is like letting that channel totally die. I was learning myself and I was just then like recording that while I had it fresh and like put it out. I would share them with friends. They'd be like, oh, how'd you do that one thing? And I would send it privately, just unlisted on these um, channels. And then I realized like, oh, there could be like a tutorial thing here. Cause at the time I was watching Andrew Kramer for After Effects. I was like, oh, but nobody's doing that for Final Cut Pro. It kind of needed to happen for the next like evolution of my work, but I do wish I was smart enough at the time just to, like hire one person, have them run it with me because one, it's a great business, but also two, it was really fun. It was really satisfying to like put out a free video and know that people learned so much from it. It would be cool to shoot through something. This is like a piece of wood that's been burned through. We had these big wildfires that came through here. It could be cool to shoot through it. Zach has achieved what most creators dream of in terms of receiving validation for their work. So what is he striving for now that the initial thrill of going viral has worn off? So in the early days of YouTube, the news would cover any video that just broke a million views. This is back in like 2007, 2008. And that, that felt cool at first. It was like validation that the real media uh, at the time was, um, you know, talking about the work. But then over the years, it's really just been finding it in myself and realizing like, oh, this is something that is sustainable by itself. And, and that's really rewarding. We did a, a short film this last year with uh, Terry Crews. And I felt like that solidified, like, you know, if we had to keep doing this just by itself, 
Like we could produce premium, you know, little mini films or even full feature films for YouTube and that would be really satisfying by itself. I'm gonna get a photo of this new growth happening on an, a dead, it seems to be a dead tree that's been burned. Zach is unique in the way that he's been able to stay relevant across the lifetime of several platforms, including Vine in its heyday. But how does he stay true to his one-of-a-kind style when there's so much pressure to conform to what's popular? It was really hard. I knew watching other you know, videos on the platform that I was not gonna do the comedy route. I couldn't pull off the punchlines of the skits. I wasn't funny enough for that. And, and that wasn't like how my brain works with the writing. And so I went to like the visuals. What can I do that would be interesting? When he started posting the Vine videos, people were like, oh, this is like George Millier's. And I was like, who, George who? And then like had to Google it. And you're like, oh yeah, well, that's kind of weird. He did like a lot of these similar even story tricks. But the specific style I think came probably because my grandfather got me into magic. I was inspired by a lot of stop motion too growing up, Wallace and Gromit. And I was inspired by a mix of like the inventiveness of their um, different inventions and how he gets out of bed and the contraptions, but also like a quick, I don't know, VFX version of it. And that kind of, I think is like weird ingredients for all what like the magic style might be. Back in 2015, Zach worked with Justin Bieber on a video for his hit song, Sorry. So what was the biggest challenge of merging music and his visual effects style? And what did he walk away from that project having learned? It's weird you bring up the Justin Bieber lyric video because I remember specifically we had found this paint that if you painted it on concrete and got it wet, it, that part didn't get wet. And so I think we did a lot of those gags like splashing in slow motion the text, which weirdly we developed like other tricks for like five, six years later. I do this when I'm running. I don't know if this, it looks like somebody stacked this back in the day, but it's one of those like perfectly stacked rocks, but I do it when I'm running. I'll count how many times I've done that trail by my house. Well, I think a lot of people look at, you know, the big things in the career and that's what's made you. And that's kind of the obvious thing to do. I mean, I guess you get granular about it and you bring up old projects like that. You, I'm even reminded you forget, there's like so much small, little micro groundwork that's laid. It's not these massive stepping stones, even the ones you see on IMDb, it's, there's so much stuff in between there. It's clear that Zach's mind is always three steps ahead and his drive to keep learning trumps anything that would slow him down. So what is the ultimate version of how he does his work? Is this the final form or is there a bigger dream than the studio we started our journey at? The dream someday is to have a ranch like Lucasfilm though. You got post-production happening there. You have all these facets of production. But I think the idea that the building is surrounded by like nature would be so cool. Oh, careful, that was poison oak. You just got it all over your... Right here? No, I'm just messing. Can I take a photo of you and your horse? Zach's goals are lofty and come after years of grinding it out and figuring out how to make his career and art work together. But would he recommend someone start down this path now after everything he's seen and been through? Well, I preface with one thing, like I can never make that decision for you and be prescriptive, but I say, why not put all your chips on and really go for something. If it's about focus and time. And I've just noticed the people who go 50% in or like even 75% of the way in, it's not enough. You have to give it all. And like, why not just set it for a period of time? Hey, I'm gonna go all in for two years. Let's get one last photo, the garage. Zach has taken the lessons that he's learned over the years from being a solo creator and turned them into a studio that he can be proud of. But after hearing about how self-sufficient he's been, it begs the question, why does he have a team if he's proven he can do this all by himself? So much little things that I, I notice it probably looks like trash to everybody. Guaranteed, actually, it looks like trash. But to me, this looks like uh, every project, the last couple, and then a bunch of new ones that are happening. Also looks like we have an organizational problem. Over the years, my relationship with having a team has really evolved. We should get a, a team photo of whoever's here currently. Oh, yeah. But the hard part for me has always been partly knowing when to let go. <laughs> I did the VFX for so many years on my work, and I felt like oh, I was the only one that knew how to do it. Are you, are you okay, Noah? I'm fine. You just, your, pride, your pride is hurt? Letting that go, letting management of the business go just so I can get to a place where I'm really focusing on what am I best at and what do I 
give the biggest impact for, which is for me, like the creative storytelling of it. In the last couple of years, it's really been exciting to have a team. It's been freeing, learning to give trust to other people. It's kind of a big lie when you're like, I'm the only one that can do this. Okay, this is the part of the video where I look at all the photos that Zach took and I share my favorite one with you, which is this one right here. But before I show you this, you should know, I'm gonna give this away to one of you, along with a personalized note from Zach. In order to be eligible, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video over at CorridorDigital.com. This series only exists because of Corridor Digital members, and it is the best way to support what we do. We have a bunch more episodes of Loaded Questions over there with some amazing artists in some pretty stunning locations. All right, this is my favorite photo. See, the biggest thing I took away from talking with Zach was seeing how he's built a team around him that empowers him to do the best work possible. Not all the work, but instead what he's genuinely passionate about. And I think there's a vital lesson in there. See, there's this feeling that as creative people, we have to be perfect at every single part of what we do. But Zach understands that creating space for what you're passionate about in your process allows you to not only be more fulfilled, but also brings up other talented people around you. So if you want this photo that Zach took along with a personalized note from him, head over to CorridorDigital.com and drop a comment there. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Loaded Questions, and I'll see you next time.